first of all, this is Gary Ansel, and this is my esteemed colleague, Kenny Rosenfeld. We're both very grateful for Dr. Veith to have us here at the Veith 2017. And we're going to talk to you about pulmonary embolization. And Kenny kind of really is the highlight of pulmonary embolization in the United States now. He's done a national trend of the PERT, or PE response teams, that everybody's clamoring to get on nowadays. And Kenny, it was really amazing that, and everybody's talk, they talked about their PERT team. And so it's a congratulations to do that. So what did you think out of that session we were at about the different devices and all that? What's the important take home from what we were seeing in that session? Well, thanks, Gary. And uh, again, I want to thank Frank for uh, highlighting the importance of this incredible illness, pulmonary embolism, which really takes so many lives. Number three killer in the cardiovascular arena in the country. And it's really, really tremendously under-recognized. And so I, I, I thank Frank's uh, idea to, to focus on this in a dedicated symposium is really, really, really excellent. Um, the PERT concept, you're right, we, we kind of talk about it, Gary, like it's become a, a verb in the English language right. and a noun in the English language. You have a PERT and we're going to PERT this patient. And uh, it's, it's been kind of fun. Uh, and it's probably been the most exciting thing that I've done in my career. And I've done a lot of, a lot of different things. Um, and part of the reason for that is that the unmet need is, is tremendous. The uh, lack of recognition, the lack of treatment, only about 5% of patients get actually treated with advanced therapies. And we know that a lot more patients are, are amenable to those things. But I, was, I think it's really controversial now. One of the reasons that PERTs are so important is because there's such a, a, uh, a variety of different ways and huge variation in the way that pe patients are treated with pulmonary embolism. I know at your center, you showed some amazing uh, cases where you just take the simple approach of, of putting in a catheter. You want to talk about that? Because I think it's, it's, um, it's novel in its simplicity. Right, and I think you know we have, we know what to do for the low risk, almost nothing except anticoagulation. We know how to almost deal with most of the massives, we're getting better devices. It's that intermediate group that we're really looking at and you know I think the first thing is to make sure that we decrease our mortality without hurting them. So we actually have taken a very simplistic approach to that even though I really like devices and I think that was one of the things that came out of the session to me was that lots of docs are using lots of different devices and the interesting thing is this is the birth of this and that's why we're seeing all these different, uh, different ways to try to approach Right. this and it doesn't seem like any of them's per perfect yet what do you think no I think that's right there's a it's a, a changing landscape there are really interesting new devices that are becoming available new atherect uh, new excuse me new thrombectomy devices uh, that we see on the floor here at the Veith symposium and in addition we have the large bore you know suck it all out with the angiovac we have the echos catheter which has done really generate the most data uh, to date with uh, thousands of patients getting uh, treated with thrombolytic therapy and now in very low doses. So we have all these different uh, options available and I think the challenge for the clinician in the field is how do I choose amongst those? Which is actually the genesis of the PERT program is that, that if in the absence of level one data or even level two data uh, and with levels of evidence that are C and, and, and below sometimes, uh, the, the best thing to do is to actually put, to, put together a multidisciplinary team and come up with a consensus uh, about what the best treatment is for a given patient. I know you guys participate in PERT. Um, what, what has been your impression, your impression of this sort of this movement uh, that's been created uh, almost internationally? And we'll talk about that in a second. Well, I think the big thing is that it's got the different specialties really talking to each other, that we're actually working together. So everything from the emergency room through the pulmonary care to the cardiologist, vascular surgeon, the radiologist, all the different specialties are working together to do the best outcome for these patients. And actually, I, I think it goes beyond what we even have for STEMI because I think we're actually integrating this diagnosis better than almost any in, that I've ever seen in the nation for medical care. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, uh, one of the challenges in this area is that there have been so many different specialties that treat this entity. And at our center, we found that, that uh, the treatment varied depending upon whether the patient was being uh, seen 
in on an orthopedic floor or a uh, in intensive care unit or the emergency department or medical floor and it was all over the map and, and bringing all the specialties within one center that actually focus on pulmonary embolism, the experts in that area really enabled us to, to streamline care and, and improve care for patients and hopefully outcomes. Just the hard thing is proving that there's going to be a difference in outcomes at the end of the day. So, you know, a lot of moving parts and we're trying to sort of put them all together uh, and, you know, your center and many others and Frank, uh, by leading this sort of charge uh, with at VEATH, I think is, is, um, has been a good thing. We put together a national consortium of centers with the hope of collecting the data from all these centers on the different treatments and then integrating that and analyzing it and figuring out what is the right treatment, what are the best protocols, what are the best algorithms for treating patients with a given degree of pulmonary embolism. For example, those those submassive high-risk patients, what, what is the best therapy for a given patient? So with that launch of that 501c3 consortium a couple of years ago, there's been tremendous international interest as well. And last uh, spring, uh, at our third annual meeting, we had uh, a cohort from China uh, come, and these are high-level people. And they went back within a month. They had set up their own what they call the China PERT Consortium. So we're now it's now international, and we're hoping to put together the international collaborative of PERT Consortium that will share data, share practices, best practices, and hopefully streamlined care so it's kind of exciting are you ready to go to China I'm ready to go to China <laughs> it shows you this is a patient population that extends across all ages all nations yeah. it's ripe for innovation that's why it's here at VEATH 2017 yeah. I think it's important you know one of the things about this disease state Gary that I don't know about you and impressed by this that you said it involves all different ages and uh, classes of people this is one disease unlike coronary artery disease peripheral artery disease which build up over years and years and years. This disease strikes out of the blue to anybody. And it is, compared to those other two, it is totally preventable. So we really need to work at, at both the prevention side as well as the treatment side. So I so thanks again, Dr. Veith, for having us at Veith 2017. We really appreciate it. What a great meeting. Thank you. I agree.